Dear friends, welcome to you. As we come together on this day, as we commemorate the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe, when the sounds of war fell silent on this continent. We come together conscious of our need for God's forgiveness, for the sin and desire to dominate others, that leads to conflict between people and war between nations. As we remember the many soldiers, sailors and airmen who gave their lives restraining evil and opposing uh, tyranny, so we also come in thanksgiving for the years of peace that the nations of Europe have enjoyed since the Second World War. We gather joyfully today as those who gathered on that first victory day, glad of each other's company and grateful for the laughter and love that follows times of sadness and loss. But above all things, let us pray that God's will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, as we join our voices together in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, 
you will know my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the father and the father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the father and the father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Today we celebrate the 75th anniversary of VE Day. For many it must have been a day of mixed emotions. The return of peace to Europe was arriving and soon many who had been sent away on active service would be able to return to their homes and families. Danger and threat were passing. And I can't begin to imagine the joy that was felt around our country on that day. And yet, victory over the Japanese was still some months away. And the Red Army was now sitting in the middle of Europe and bringing great suffering to the civilian population of Germany and uncertainty to the other allies. Not only this... But for many people, not least the women of our country, the end of the war would seem to mean returning to the home and the pre-war expectations of society from which many would have found liberation during the war. Fathers, like my own grandfather, would have been returning to children who might not even recognise them, uncertain of how they would be received. My own father, born on, uh, in September 1939, with my grandfather joining the Royal Navy soon after and coming home again in 1945. The arrival of peace, like the arrival of war, is not without its traumas. Although it is the victory in Europe that we commemorate at this time, it's not victory that we celebrate. In war, no one truly wins. It's, is it not more a case of the side which manages to lose the least? As Christians, we cannot celebrate war. But we can wholeheartedly express our gratitude for sacrifices made by others and for the peace that was bought with so many lives. And today, as we celebrate the peace we have enjoyed with our neighbours for so many years, and for the cooperation that has grown over the past three quarters of a century, which we imperil at our great risk. For so many, the end of the war meant the possibility of coming home if not immediately, then at least safely. And it is that theme of homecoming that we hear of in John's Gospel, a home that is prepared for us, a home that is permanent, a home that is in the economy of God's salvation, is where we can place our heart. There's a sense in which our earthly home 
is not simply some pale imitation of our future hope, but a joyful anticipation of what is to come, modelled on the vision of our heavenly home and brought into our present reality. In this chapter of John's Gospel, the author goes on to report Jesus as saying this, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. When we commit ourselves to the work of peace, in gratitude to those who gave their all in the service of others, we move in the direction of heaven and answer the divine call to come home. Thanks be to God. A time of crisis and concern. The way ahead is obscured and the straight path we expected suddenly twists away from still waters and green pastures into a dark valley. The comforting landscape is gone and we stumble among the rocks, no longer seeing our destination or what lies on the road that we tread. Global conflicts, global pandemics unroot us from our old stories and threaten to leave us drifting and sure of who we are of what our story is today and what it will be tomorrow. We make our stories and our stories make us. As we listen to memories of 75 years ago, let us pray for God's strength today. Give thanks for all our blessings and pray for healing and justice throughout the world. I fear no evil, for you are with me your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I'm getting on a bit now, of course. I have to think a bit, but I have to start from the beginning. You see, I was only 17. I was only a young man. I was only six at the end of the war. I lived in a village at Keithley, and we didn't have any bombs or anything. So we were very lucky that way. My father joined up because there was no work, and oh, it was all going to be over by Christmas. I was 10 years old when the war started. I remember listening to the announcements on the radio at 11 o'clock and I was frightened every time an aeroplane went over. All the windows were blacked out. If a tiny light showed, the air raid warden would knock on the door. The streets were pitch black and no lamps were lit. When the air raid siren went off, we would hear the German bombers overhead and had to wait for the all clear buzzer. It was big towns they were after and not villages where I lived. Car headlights had to be dipped so only tiny lights shone onto the roads. Hit my father. He was called up uh, into a military service during the first first month of the war in early September, middle September, 1939. Uh, he was a trained battlefield medic, my dad. He was a grand fella. Yeah, it was a fine example, my dad. I was only a young man and I worked for a, a firm called Rickett and Coleman of Hull. And as I worked inside the box shop making boxes for Robin Starch, and then after about oh, nine months to a year, I was called up, of course, naturally. And they wanted men to go in an ambulance service. So I volunteered for that, 56. Mobile Field Hospital and we were posted not far away from Burma actually on the borders of India.
So my grandmother, she made the smaller sitting room in the farmhouse a recreation room for the men and women there. And one Christmas during the war, all leave was stopped, but not to be outdone with no electricity, only one cold water tap. Grandma made sure all those men and women had a full Christmas dinner. Apparently, she started serving at half past 11 and it was half past three when she finished. I was living in Norton, uh, near Moulton, you know. I remember the VE Day party that we had. So it was all planned to be in the, um, in the street. It was planned to be a street party with tables all down the middle of the street. The ladies uh, made all uh, bunting to go across the lampposts, I remember. And then uh, when the day of the party dawned itself, it was absolutely pouring down. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was quickly reorganized. And there was, a, uh, there was a commercial vehicle garage not far away. And so they went to ask Mr. Bell, who ran Bell's Garages, uh, if they could have it in there. And he very kindly cleared out uh, the commercial vehicles, which so the ladies very quickly cleaned it all up. It was really spick and span, and all the trestle tables that were that were planned to be going down the middle of the street, they were all laid out um, in the um, in the garage, and we had a whale of a time, you know. Considering that uh, everything was still on ration then, you know, uh, and it was it was it was probably meagre fare by comparison to what we would expect of a party today. But to us kids, it was absolutely wonderful, you know. We thought it was fantastic. Yeah. We all went home and listened to Winston Churchill's broadcast afterwards, you know. The blackout was lifted, but it was summer, so we didn't notice that as much. In our village, we had some Guernsey evacuees, so of course they were happy, you know, that they'd be able to go home. But we were all sorry to lose them all, you know. I went to Cambridge to celebrate and rejoice that the war had ended. I went punting on the River Cam, singing and dancing in the park and climbed into the fountain. I was drinking lemonade as we couldn't drink beer then. I listened to Winston Churchill on the radio and then in the afternoon to the King's speech. I went to the church services. Although Churchill had declared victory, I was worried about my brothers, who were still fighting the Japanese. There's a camp between Warwick and Leamington Spa, and we did, it was 11 o'clock in the evening, lights out at 11, all that, you know, and when the sooner got to bed, we all got a bell and a ring on it. And uh, to say that the war had ended well, everybody scrambled around, put their clothes on, and that was it. That's the first time I'd ever been in the officer's mess. You never, you never got a chance to look in anybody else's, you know, department. You know, my father came back from the war. And, yeah. well, there were a, a few of us friends, you know, and because we hadn't been able to, they hadn't rung the church bells through the war. You know, that was a sign of invasion, dear. So we all went along and rang the church bells, you know. So that was quite exciting, you know. And of course, uh, the blackout was lifted, but it was summer, so we didn't notice that as much. Anyway, he came back uh, uh, because he was called up early. He was demobbed early, and uh, he came back to us. And I remember him uh, coming down the street on the... Um, on the day that he was demobbed. It was only a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks after the end of the war, and um, I was playing. I was only a little boy. I was be about six at the time. I remember playing down by the stream, which, uh, which ran past the bottom of the road, and um, he screwed me up in his arms, carried me home. We celebrated in the best way we could, you know. We did have... Uh, parties and things but of course things were still rationed for a long long time so uh, no it, it was just a sense of relief really it's a long time ago thank goodness <laughs>
in an act of commitment. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow women and men, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. We say together, Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit. Give us wisdom. Give us courage. Give us hope. And keep us faithful now and always. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle in the hearts of all people the true love of peace, and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquillity your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of thy love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And so let us ask for God's blessing on us all. God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth and all people, peace and concord. And to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen.